In this video, we're going to discuss the various uh, product prompts, subassembly prompts, and global variables regarding extending your applied finished ends to the floor, or your side face frames to the floor, or front styles of your front face frame to the floor. Um, whether it be your manufacturing methods, uh, specific job situation, detail, there are various settings and prompts in various places to control that, and that's what we're going to discuss today extending applied finished ends and side face frames to the floor. So here we have a simple base cabinet, a frameless situation. We're going to show some framed and frameless situations in this video. This is frameless and we have our product set to be five piece doors. And if we go to our product prompts here and we look at our finishing tab here, we have some familiar prompts uh, to turn on our applied finished ends. And so let's go turn on Go ahead and turn on our applied finish then left and if we look we see a dynamic prompt appearing extend panel to floor left well let's not hit that right now let's look and see that it gives us a regular applied finish then it's sitting up the toe kick height and it looks pretty much like the front five piece but if we were to turn that variable on inside of here extend to floor um, we'll see that it's going to extend that panel to the floor and also based upon my settings in my global variable um, it's driving my subassembly prompts to increase that bottom rail height and align with my uh, the top of my f door on my front rail height. So if we go back and look at our product prompts here and we look at our finished option one more time and we look at our style and rail widths for our finished end, these are being driven from your door wizard settings in the lookup table door and the finished end columns for these sizes here. We see our bottom rail width is two and a half, but that's not what's matching up in our drawing here. And that's because if we were to look at our subassembly prompts for this side finished end, so our, our finished end base left solid wood subassembly here, we see that this bottom rail width is actually where it's adding, um, adding to the bottom rail width set out in our local prompts. Um, the toe kick height and some other extension amount, uh, the floor scribe, and also another increment maybe to try to align these two depending on the condition of your front inset or not or whether what the size of this bottom rail is doing some calculations so um, but how is it working this way we see these are formula driven they're red um, if we were to look at this formula we see it's got a bunch of stuff going on and we'll get more into that how that's working in the inner workings when we go to the spreadsheet later but uh, you have some controls in the global variables. So if we go to our advanced project setup, go to our global variables here and library construction, and we look and find our cabinet sides and finished ends. Under additional side options, we find um, a series of variables that correspond to how extending that applied finished end works. And we see a global variable to make our finished ends always extend when we have applied finished ends. So we can go ahead and check that on, and that'll by default make sure every applied finished end extends to the floor. And uh, that works for generic slab door, uh, finished end, sorry, or um, generic five piece. Um, it will do the same thing for both and extend them down. Now some of the things particular to solid wood um, applied finished ends are these other variables. So in here we see a variable called increase applied ends bottom rail at floor. By checking this on, we will, um, you know, it, it will increase the bottom rail width. We saw in the in the prompts it was two and a half, right? But uh, if we check this on, it will increase that bottom rail width inside the subassembly prompt by the toe kick height and the floor scribe, if we so desire. So that's one setting you can have on, and that's what we have on right now. Another one is align applied ends bottom rail to face, and what this does is an additional. Um, calculation it'll do to try to align the top of the side applied finished end bottom rail to a drawer or door um, bottom rail the top of that and whether it's inset or overlay it has some calculations inside of there and it'll try to adjust that bottom rail on your finished end accordingly uh, it's pretty thorough but um, but we'll look at it later that sometimes if it's not exactly what you want, you can always override the subassembly prompt. So this is just some further auto automation that you can check on to um, have your most common scenarios where you want to extend 
or I'm going to increase this to a line, it will do that. Uh, this really is only built in in the base cabinets and the tall cabinets applied finished ends and in the bottom rail. Um, it's not built in. There's no variables for top rails aligning with the front top rails, um, either that in a base or tall or upper. So this is the most common one we have built in right now. Um, if you need to align your top rail with the face of a top rail of a door or drawer front, you can always go into the subassembly prompts and change that height to be different from what's being driven from the door wizard. Um, another one that's kind of along uh, about applied finished ends, especially when it comes to um, solid wood, is this increased rear style at finished end scribe. So um, this doesn't have to do with extending, but it does have to do with your applied finished end five piece. And that is that if you check this on when you have a finished end scribe amount, it will increase that um, rear style width by that amount. So to ensure by the time you scribe off that scribe material, your rear style width will be the same as your front. Um, if you don't have that checked on, it'll just still increase the overall width of your applied finished end by your finished end scribe, but um, it won't increase that rear style width. And so that just depends on um, what you want to set that to. That option is there. As well, there is another option called floor scribe, which um, is being used by these applied finished ends, and that is found under your cabinet toe kick options here. And if we go to just the general settings, there's a um, global variable called floor scribe. And right now in the library, it's really just these applied finished ends that are using this increment um, to extend those beyond the floor, a scribe amount that can be scribed off in the field, uh, three eighths. Uh, but you can set that to whatever you want or use it or not. Just want to make you aware that the formulas inside the subassemblies um, will pull this in if this is populated and add that increment in the extension amount. So with those global settings set the way they are, that's why we're getting this scenario here where it's extending um, by default when we click on an applied finished end. And uh, we can go ahead and click on the right as well, just for example purposes. And we'll see that that extends down. And one of the things we can see about that variable called align applied ends bottom to face is we'll see that this is aligning Again, that uh, top of this bottom rail on the finished end, let's go ahead and do an extension line here just to show you that those are indeed aligning with the front there. Um, we see how that aligns in a frameless situation, but in a face frame, it also the alignment uh, is smart enough to figure out um, your overlay condition or inset condition. If we look at the face frame, we'll see that uh, this is an overlay condition, but the bottom rail is still trying to align with the front bottom rail of your door. And if we were to change this to an inset door, we'll see that it adjusts even more to try to align. And we change our door options to an inset door, and we should see that this bottom rail adjusts even more on the applied finished end to try to align. And that's because we have that global on, and so the prompts are inside the subassembly are trying to do that. As well, even if we were to turn on a side face frame and go to our face frame options, turn on a side face frame, now our regular subassembly row in the main product, our applied finish end will turn off, but our nested applied finish end will turn on. And because we have the align on, it'll still try to align that, it'll increase that bottom rail on your applied finished end, excuse me, to try to align. So let's go ahead and see that. So again, we see it trying to align here. And so that variable can be helpful in what you're trying to do. So I just wanted to show you where those are at. Another side note about that extending, um, the applied back options inside your product as well also look to those same extension amounts. Um, if we were to go and turn on our applied back panel, and turn on our extend finish back to the floor. It happens to live on the main prompts in this current version of the library. Perhaps that might be moved to finish doing options in the future. So, But that's the extend. So let's go ahead and extend that. And we'll see that the bottom rail increases as well. That logic is built inside the finish back. 
which is basically an applied finish stand panel um, rotated and we'll see that that is also aligning and has that logic to do that as well built in okay so we've looked at um, applied finished ends and namely five piece solid wood sub assemblies where there are other variables to control the bottom rail width and other nuances to this but there's also some things to note about extending to floor applied finished end panels when they are slab the slab we'll see here has a built-in toe kick notch that will also turn on when you extend to the floor if I was to turn off the extension to the floor obviously you wouldn't want the notch so you won't get the notch but there's built-in logic inside the sub assembly that when it is extending it will do the notch so we can go ahead and turn that back on we'll see the notch appear oops sorry I'll extend that again we'll see that notch appear and if ever we want to turn that notch off and extend to the floor um, that is a sub assembly prompt inside of this product or I'm sorry inside of this slab finished in base slab sub assembly you can just turn that off and there's no global drive in that right now it's just a um, situation by situation sub assembly prompt turning it off so we'll just turn that off and you'll see uh, now the notch is off so something to note about uh, slab applied finished ends when going to the floor it has the built-in toe kick notch okay so we've looked at some frameless situations with applied finished ends uh, but there's also another way to finish a cabinet side uh, especially in a face frame product you have the ability to add side face frames and um, one of the things about that is extending the side face frame to the floor or also extending the styles or front face frame to the floor whether it be the styles or the bottom rail in addition to that um, so here we have a face frame base cabinet and if we were to turn on our face frame options we'll see how it typically works um, if we go to our face frame tab here and turn on our face frame left let's just turn on both and we'll go ahead and turn on our applied finished end so we see some panels inside those side face frames and if we draw those um, this is what we typically get is just you know a face frame sitting at the same height off the floor as the front face frame and we have an applied finished end panel inside. Well, um, if we wanted to extend these to the floor, uh, what we'll see is different than the applied finished ends where we had an extension uh, to the floor out in the main product prompts. If we go over to our face frame, we won't find those in the main product prompts. Um, those are built in inside of the subassembly prompts. And that you know, brings us to a point that's a difference about the applied finished ends and the face frames. The applied finished ends actually, if we just take a quick a quick peek inside the um, subassembly list here, is the applied finished ends actually increase by the overall subassembly height by the extension amount. And they also adjust in Z origin accordingly. But your applied finished ends and even your I'm sorry, your side face frames and your front face frames basically stay the same to say the net height which is the height of the cabinet minus the toe kick height and the z origin is the um, toe kick height and that's the same for your side face frames and like i said before those that's because the face frames basically just extend down that amount that you want to extend whereas the applied finished ends extend but they increase the overall height and the bottom rail increases so a little different just something to be aware of so again going back um, we can go into our subassembly prompts of our front face frame and we'll see some prompts about extending. So we can extend the left style down amount, we can extend the right style down amount, and we can extend the bottom down, um, the rail down amount. And we can just simply, for a one-off situation, we can put in whatever increment we want and we'll see our styles extend by that amount we enter or the bottom rail extend by that amount we enter. And it'll still be anchored at the top where it was before just extending down um, and if we look at our side face frame we can see the same thing so we'll see the same three prompts extending left style right style and the bottom rail well I want to show you um, where the global variables are that to drive these to be a more automated setup for a particular job or um, just your template the way that you construct so let's go ahead and look at those variables Let's go to our advanced project setup again, go to our global variables, go to library construction, and we have a category called face frame construction here. And if we look inside here under the general settings, we'll see some options regarding extending to the floor. 
So the first variables we see are for the front face frame. We see an extend face frame styles to floor. And in previous libraries, this was just a checkbox of on and off. Um, but in current libraries, it's actually a combo box choice. And basically, you, se you select when, basically what scenarios you want to extend your styles, your front styles down to the floor. And you have a combo box choice here. Uh, you can do it none, never extend them, which is basically this picture here. Always um, at a regular finished end at an applied finished end, at a side face frame, or maybe it's an applied finished end and side face frame that you want to have those um, extend, your front styles extend to the floor, or all finished end types, which would basically be these three here. So let's go ahead and set this to applied finished ends and side face frame to now, and we'll see how that plays out in our product. Um, we also have the next variable is extend face frame bottom rail to floor. And we can see here that uh, in, by the picture that it's going to extend your bottom rail of your front face frame to the floor. And you can do that for a furniture type cabinet. And maybe even go, once you do that, you could even do a face frame modifier and do some sort of cutout in here. Um, you can look at the face frame modifier video. We're not going to discuss that here, but just want to show you where that option is to extend the bottom rail to the floor. I'll just leave that off for now. The next settings we'll see is about the side face frames. So we'll see extend side face frame styles to floor. Um, we'll see four different scenarios. This is a combo box choice. Uh, it's not a scenario when it'll do, it's just which ones do you want to extend? Do you want none, both, front only, or rear only, as the pictures um, tell you. The next one is um, just like the front, it's the extend the side face frame bottom rail to floor. So you can choose to have it do that or not. So let's go ahead and turn um, both of those on for our side, extend both styles, and let's extend our bottom rail to the floor for our side face frame. And then we're gonna go out and see what it draws. One, one other little side note about side face frames and one other little setting that's here, similar to applied finished end, ability to increase the rear style by the finished end scrap amount, you have the same ability for your side face frames to ensure that by the time you scribe off the scribe amount on your side face frame, the rail widths will still match up to the front rail width. So that's called increase side face frame rear style at finished end scribe. And if that's checked on, it'll increase that rear style by that finished scribe amount, finished end scribe amount rather, sorry. Okay, so let's go and leave those settings and let's go see what uh, how it affects our product here. We'll redraw this product. And now we see our styles extended and our bottom rail extended. So let's just show a few more scenarios, um, a few other settings you might set up in your global variable and see how it drives. Let's go back to our face frame here. And what if we set our uh, bottom rail? We'll click that on and we'll see our bottom rail and our front will increase or sorry, extend to the floor. And maybe one other situation or um, template setup for maybe some furniture cabinets might be uh, for a vanity or something of the like. You can do, um, you can go ahead and extend everything. Oops, sorry, wrong, in the wrong section here. Let's go to general settings. Let's go ahead and turn off our extending of bottom rails both on the front and this, uh, the sides and you can see here we get kind of a more of a furniture look which might be coming handy for a vanity or something like that. You can turn a product into a face frame product into a vanity really quickly here. Kind of cool. Okay so now that we've shown you some some of the settings and global settings and with any prompts on how this works. Let's take a quick peek under the hood to see how these things are, are driven so you can know where they live if you need to manipulate them, uh, customize your library even further. So if we go inside our applied finished end, um, let's go inside our applied finished end through the spreadsheet here. Go to our design data, find that subassembly. It's gonna be your um, finished end base left solid wood. Let's just take a look at that one. 
And what we saw earlier through the product prompts, um, we saw that the bottom rail is increasing. And in here, there are some formulas that basically look to your door wizard for that default height. Then at the tail end here, we have some additional things that it's doing. And so it's saying if your global align applied ends to bottom rail to face equals one, then take this local prompt, or sorry, this local prompt within inside the subassembly of align bottom rail front calc minus bottom rail difference calc. And then also it's adding if your increase applied ends bottom rail at floor equals one, then and extend floor, then go ahead and add the toe kick height in the floor scribe. So that first one for aligning is using some calculator prompts that are hidden down here. If you ever wanted to know where those are located, this align bottom rail front calc and bottom rail difference calc. So this first one is trying to see based upon whether it's overlay or inset, where the origin is of the front, the top of the front rail, or sorry, the bottom of the finished end rail versus the bottom of the front rail. And it uses that increment as well as the difference between the default bottom rail width for your uh, door door front on the front of the cabinet and your finished end bottom rail width. And it uses that in the calculation. So these are some pretty thorough and very long um, formulas in here that try to do their best to uh, come up with you know the amount it needs to to change that bottom rail width to align but again if ever you need to change that you can always subassembly prompt that and stomp that value to be whatever you want so um, again just pointing out that the applied finished end um, is the overall subassembly height is increasing by that extension amount we saw earlier and the Z origin, whereas the side face frames are a little different. So let's go look at a side face frame and a front face frame under the hood here. So if we look at a side face frame, let's look at that one first because it's a little simpler. Go inside our design data and look at a side face frame. Again, we'll see this one is just the height minus toe kick height that doesn't, doesn't increase the overall subassembly by the extension amounts. It actually just extends the parts inside. And we'll see that by going into the subassembly file here. If we go over, we see to the prompts, we see the extension amounts here and we see the formulas are basically looking to our globals, our extension of those selections and doing different things depending and adding that toe kick height and scribe amount. Um, same with the bottom rail and we'll see inside the subassembly that, that those prompts are being sprinkled on the length of the parts and the width of the bottom rail and also the origins of the styles it's also being sprinkled there so that's how the side face frames are working uh, if we look at the front face frame it's a little bit more complex uh, because it has to go based on some scenarios so let's look at that so if we look at our base base frame subassembly, go inside of here and look at these prompts. The same said prompts here, extend left style and right style and bottom amount. If we look at the bottom, that's one's pretty simple. It's just whether or not that global is checked on here, then it'll go ahead and increase by the toe kick height and the floor scribe amount. But your left style and right style, those are basically combo box selections in the global, right, uh, different scenarios of when you want it to extend. So what we're using in here is a VLOOKUP function, and we're looking to a table, or sorry, we're looking to see what your scenario is selected at when you want to extend the space frame styles to the floor. And then we're looking to a local table in here that we'll show you in a moment to see if that scenario has been met. So if we were to follow that formula here, um, we could see it's a lookup table over here. There's two lookup tables. Your extend style to floor left and your extend style to floor right. And basically this first column here is equivalent to the combo box choices. And so depending on when, what you have selected inside your global, it'll find that corresponding row. In our case, we have this on. Apply to finish inside face frame. And it'll look to column two. And in here is a formula to see if that condition has been met. If the local apply to finish end is on, or if the side face frame is on, then go ahead and make this one. 
and that's what it'll return and turn on that extension amount that we saw over here. So that's how those are working and you have another one for the right and again just like the side face frame if we look over here at the part lengths we see them going down by that amount and we see bottom rail and the origins increasing by that amount or rather sorry the origins are adjusted by that amount the z origins here so that's some of the inner workings of how it works one other thing i forgot to mention is um, we looked at the applied finished ends in, as subassemblies inside the products but there's also the standalone products and those are found under your finish legs and end panels and you have a left finished end panel for base tall and upper and here we have a uh, left finished end panel for a base and this as well has the logic to extend to the floor and also um, increase the bottom rail width to try to align with whatever your global settings are um, because there is no local product prompts for front bottom rails um, to align to it's going to look to your global so it does its best to try to come up with a height here that will align with whatever you're going to um, put that next to and it's using the same subassembly so if we look at the subassembly prompts here it's the same uh, finished base left solid wood finished end base left solid wood sorry and it's doing the same thing of increasing that as best it can but you can always override that to whatever you want so hopefully that gets you familiar with how to extend applied finished ends to the floor and side face frames to the floor and the um, subassembly prompt options or local prompt options and global variable settings.